Every year, about 4,000 babies in the United States are born with some form of congenital limb loss. It's often due to a condition called amniotic band syndrome. The amniotic band syndrome is not due to genetics. It's not really caused by anything in particular. It just happens. The stigma of being born missing part of a limb can follow a child throughout their entire life, and it can even change how their identity forms. But fast forward, and these kids grow up to live normal lives, and I want to share with you some of their incredible stories. So in April, I had just gotten off a long flight, and I'm sitting in a coffee shop talking to a mom and a dad about their experience raising their two sons, and they told me all about it. Baseball games, tough days at school, all of the Legos. They have a lot of Legos. And they walked me back to what it was like when they saw the ultrasound with their first and second son, and they saw him kick for the first time. And they had so many questions. Would he grow up to have his dad's compassion or his mom's resilience? And they started to imagine those first steps, birthday cakes, even graduation. And the specialist came in and she told them, you're having a healthy baby boy. And they were ecstatic. But then her voice began to change. And due to an amniotic band that had formed in the womb, their son would be born missing part of his right arm. And the family took a minute to really hear what the specialist was saying. What would this mean for their son? What would it change? What would they do? And the specialist continued and said, from here, you have two options. Do you still want to continue the pregnancy? From before the moment this little boy was born, people have been telling him that he's broken. At school, growing up, other kids would bully him and tease him to remind him that he's not normal. Other parents would quietly whisper apologies to his mom when they would walk by. But for this family, their dreams for Zachary never wavered. They knew that he could and that he would overcome any obstacle, any challenge, anything. But for the boy, it was hard. The questions, the doubts, it really weighed on him. And he was often asked, what happened to your arm? And he'd simply respond without a smile and say, I was born this way. And these interactions, have an incredible impact on forming a child's identity. Not surprisingly, children who aren't afraid to go to school or interact with others do better. Having people in your life who routinely doubt whether or not you can handle something can destroy your confidence. It can change what goals you run after, and it can even keep you from achieving what you want to achieve. These moments of shame leave kids asking the universal questions. Who am I? Am I broken? Am I enough? And these type of questions tend to drive parents to the conversation about prosthetics. And, but pr prosthetics and access for children, it's still really complicated. Whether it's due to high cost and a functional electric device can be well over $50,000. Or the fact that doctors and insurance companies are a little hesitant because children grow so quickly. Can you imagine every time your nine-year-old outgrew their shoes, you had to replace their expensive bionic arm? That would really be a lot. And because of this, the standard for children's prosthetic, even today, tends to be a cosmetic-only device, no function, or perhaps a hook device. You want to take a guess at what the rejection rates are for kids who do not want to wear those kind of arms? <laughs> it's high, quite high. And that's what my team is working to change. We think that we can use technology to be able to help everyone, from kids to adults, be able to tackle any challenge they have, any dream that they want. Bionics are improving to the point where now artificial limbs can tackle all those challenges. But it's so much more than just about function. Turns out, if you ask the kids, it was never even about being able to pick things up. Let me help you picture it. So you're in the grocery store, and you see someone walking over, and you know that they're going to ask those awkward questions. 
What happened to you? Was it an alligator? And these are real questions that our bionic kids have been asked. It's hard for anyone in that situation to talk about their experience from a position of strength, but especially a child. And if you're wearing a heavy doll plastic-like device, the prosthetic has already started the conversation for you. So we decided we would go in an entirely different direction, and we used 3D printers to do it. Color, confidence, and expression. This is Shahali Ayers. Shahali wore her custom creation on the New York Fashion Week runway. She wanted to help promote inclusivity and some really cool fashion. We used 3D printers to bring together these beautiful artistic designs and functional neuroprosthetic engineering to give kids Iron Man technology at a price that's so low we can donate every device. We believe that it was never about function. It was always about kids believing that they are enough and expression helps them find it. The reason that traditional prosthetics have such high rejection rates is not because children aren't mature enough to handle them. It's because they're too heavy. They don't have the right functionality and worse, doll plastic feels like an apology for being broken. So we decided at our kitchen table that our team would try to change all of that. We designed for function and expression. We even had the kids draw us pictures of what they wanted their bionic arms to look like, and they did not want it to look like doll plastic. <laughs> and then we got to work from the ground up, 3D printing these beautiful creations that could grow with them over their, their own growth spurts. And now that same conversation in the grocery store has completely changed. Now people stop and they say, that is such a cool arm. How did you get it? Or how does it work? And the change in that conversation can radically alter the development of a child's identity. So what does that look like for the kids? Well, at school, on Superhero Day, Alex now dresses as himself. Now that's confidence. He has the best school picture day of any kid, right? <laughs> Alex tells us now that he wants to go to college. He wants to be able to use technology to be able to help other people just like him and be able to tackle whatever dream they want. When we first met Alex, he was afraid to go to the grocery store because of all of those awkward conversations and what it had done to his identity. What a transformation. Annie has been wearing her bionic arm for a while now, and she loves the color and the expression. It matches her cell phone case, her, <laughs> her Yeti cup, even her dress. <laughs> Annie's really wonderful. She dreams of becoming a pediatric oncology nurse or a dolphin trainer. She's still deciding right now but it's so clear that her empathy and compassion just overflows. She's already trying to encourage other kids just like her that there is a future and there are those dreams that they have that they should run after full steam. It's really wonderful. Identity plays an enormous role in how we perceive the world, what we do with our free time, even the goals we set. People with disabilities, people with impairments, rarely identify with the idea and the label of disability. That label is projected by society. And we all work exceptionally hard to prove to everyone else around us that we are enough. And that starts as young as the kindergartner on the playground. And it radically changes how we grow up, how we feel, and what we do. So since starting to wear their bionic arms, Kids like Zachary and Alex have seen incredible growth in their confidence, in their grades at school, and what they tell us about their dreams for the future. They tell us now that they all want to go to college. They all want to use technology for something more to impact their communities. 
They envision themselves as fashion models, engineers, anything they can set their minds to, and we believe them. By reframing the challenge with technology and art, we've helped unlock their secret identities, and expression helps them get there. Now we need to reframe how we look at the idea of disability and change from a conversation of asking, am I enough, to one of being able to celebrate unique expression and differences. And we want all of these kids to know that there truly are no limits. Thank you very much.